Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So we want to next chapter of our curriculum. Uh, it's called grammatical labeling, which is a'rabu jumlatil ismiyati. So a grammatical uh, labeling of noun sentences. So there's two levels of labeling. So a'rab is labeling. Uh, the first is sentence level labels, and they contain separate words and or fragments within them. And this is called a higher level labeling. And then you have fragment level labels, which further break down. It's a further breakdown of the sentence uh, level uh, labels, and this is the lower level labeling. So if we start with the first, which is the sentence level labels, uh, which which is the uh, higher level labeling. So for noun sentences, the jumla uh, is is made up of three parts. The first is what they call the initiator, which is the mubtada. Uh, its default status is rafa. It is uh, it is an ism that comes before. It is the ism that comes before is in the English translation, and it always uh, must be present within a noun sentence. Uh, the second uh, part of a noun sentence is what we call the news, which is habar. Its default status is rafa as well. And it is the ism or the isms that comes after the is in the English translation. And the third aspect of a, a noun sentence is related to the news and is called the muta'alik bil habar. It is the ism or ism that comes after the is in the English translation as well. And it could be made up of a haruf of jar fragment or a special mudar fragment of time and place. So a muta'alik bil habar can only be made up of a harf of jar fragment or a special muda fragment of time and place. So now that every noun sentence can have a uh, can be made up of a mubtada, mubtada and a habar only. It can be made up of a mubtada and a muta'alik bil habar only. Or it can be made up of a mubtada, habar and a muta'alik bil habar. And this is the normal noun sentence order so the mubtada comes first then the habar then the muta'alik bil habar that's the normal arrangement or sequence and if we change the sequence then you can slightly change the meaning of the sentence so there's some examples here so we have hum, uh, hum al khasiruna they are the losers this is what it means so the word uh, hum is an independent pronoun which means they and this is the mubtada and the mubtada is rafa and then al khasiruna is the habar and again it's rafa in status because of the ending combination you can see the wa and the nun and there's no connection between the two isms so there's a break in the chain so the a goes in between the mubtada and the habar so we have they are the losers and i mentioned before that a is the equivalent of is for the plural so they are the losers so you'll see that they came before the r so that's the mubtada and the losers came after the r so therefore it's the habar so another example anta al alimul hakimu so anta al alimu al hakimu which means you are all knowing all wise and there's the word r again so you are all knowing all wise so anta is the independent pronoun which means you so that's the mubtada al alimu is uh, the first habar and it's rafa you can see it's rafa because of the uh, dhamma at the end and al hakimu is the second habar and again the dhamma at the end indicates that it's rafa as well so there's no connection between the three isms so there's a break in the chain so the r goes in f in uh, in the first break in the chain be between the muqtada and the first habar so you get you are all knowing all wise so another example is inna salataka sakanun lahum so certainly your supplication is tranquility for them so inna salataka is the mubtada because it's a harf of nasab and it's ism so inna is the harf of nasab and the salataka is the uh, ism of the harf of nasab so the whole thing together is the mubtada because you can't split it up so on a fragment level if we look at inna salataka so inna salata 
is the harf of nasab and its hisan. Because inna is the harf of nasab and the salata is its hisan. And the salata ka is actually an idafa fragment. It's a mudafa mudafilay. Because the salata is light and it has no al on it. And the ka, which is attached to salata ka, is the attached pronoun ka, which means you. And the original independent pronoun is uh, anta. So therefore that's an idafa. So if we look at it in terms of fragment level, this mubtada is made up of a harf of nasab and its as well as an idafa fragment as well. And, and then if we continue, uh, the saka nun is the khabar and it's rafa. Again, you can see the dhammatain. And lahum is the muta'alik bil khabar because it's a harf of jar fragment. So the muta'alik bil khabar is always either a harf of jar fragment or is a special mudaf of time and place. So the is goes between the mubtada and the khabar because it's the first break in the chain. So there's no connection between the mubtada and the khabar in, the, in terms of grammar, then the words are not connected. So there's a break in the chain. So the is goes in between the mubtada and the khabar. So you get certainly your supplication is tranquility for them. So we have a abnormal noun sentence structure. So a normal noun sentence structure, as I said uh, earlier, is the muqtada is first, then it's the habar, then it's the muta'alik bil habar. So that's the normal noun sentence order. But if you moving each component around changes the meaning of the sentence slightly. So something, uh, when something is brought forward from its normal place, we say that's called muqaddam. So meaning it's been moved forward. And when something is brought backwards from its normal place, that's called muakhar. So just the one thing that we know, that as harf of nasab and its ism can be separated, because if you remember the fragment, the harf of nasab fragment, the harf of nasab and its ism can have a gap in between, so they don't need to be next to each other. So if any part of uh, the harf of nasab or its ism, any part of it, is muakhar, so it's something that's brought back, then the entire harf of nasab fragment is considered muakhar. So there's two abnormal patterns that we'll discuss. The first is the muta'alik bil khabar is followed by the uh, muqtada which is proper. So if the muqtada is common, then this is a normal noun sentence structure. So a normal noun sentence order, if the muqtada is common, would be muta'alik bil khabar comes first, then the proper muqtada, uh, the common muqtada then comes. That's normal. But if we see a muta'alik bil habar first, and then the muqtada which is proper, then this is abnormal. And the second one is if you see uh, the muqtada, then the muta'alik bil habar, and then the habar, then it creates a slightly different meaning, and it, the meaning is determined by context. But remember, the normal uh, order is muqtada, habar, then muta'alik bil habar. But if you, swip, if you switch it around so you get muqtada, muta'alik bil habar, then habar, then this is a abnormal pattern. So the order of muta'alik um, bil habar and then muqtada, which is uh, proper, then this creates the meaning of exclusivity. So iqtisasun. So for example here, uh, we have the example Lillahi al mathalul a'la so for Allah then we use the word alone because it creates exclusivity so for Allah alone is the highest attribute so if we look at the lafzul jalala lillahi this is a muta'alik bil habar muqaddam so the muta'alik bil habar has been brought forward so that's what we say muqaddam and it's a muta'alik bil habar because it's a harf of jar fragment so you have the li the lam, the li, which is attached to the word Allah. So the li is the harf of jar, and the word Allah, the lafzul jalala, is the majroor. So you have lillahi, which means for Allah. So that's the muta'alik bil habar, and because it's being brought forward, we say muqaddam. Then the next part is al mathalul a'la. So this is the muqtada, which is muakhar. It has been brought back. So Muqtada Muakhar, so the Muqtada has been brought back. Usually it comes first, but it's been brought back now, it's come second. And because it is proper, 
uh, it is proper as well. So al mathalul al a'la, because you can see the al, so it's proper. The mubtada is proper. Uh, it's actually a mausuf sifa fragment as well. So if you see the uh, the first ism al mathalu and al a'la, they match in all four ism properties. So it's a mausuf sifa. That's why it's the highest attribute. And al a'la is non flexible, non flexible, because if you remember when you have an alif maksura at the end. It's non-flexible, so it is in rafa status. There's no reason to make it nasab jar. So the default status is always rafa, unless there's a reason to make it nasab jar. So because this is uh, the al-mathalul a'ala, the four ism properties match, so therefore it's a masur sifa. And that's and because the mubtada is proper and is muakhar, that's why you get the in the translation you get the exclusivity so that's why it's for Allah alone is the highest attribute and so here again lahu mulku samawati wal ard so for him and then we insert the word ex for exclusivity alone is the ownership of the heavens and the earth and the exclusivity so the word alone comes from the fact that the muta'allik bil habr has been brought forward and the mubtada which is proper has been brought back and so if we look at it, so the first word is uh, lahu, the first fragment is lahu. So this is a muta'alik bil habar muqaddam because it's been brought forward. So lahu is a half of your fragment. So the lam and the hu is the attached pronoun, hu. And the original is, the independent pronoun is huwa, which means he. So muta'alik bil habar muqaddam that is. And then we have mulkus, mulkus samawati wal ardi. So this is the muqtada muakhar. It is proper. The reason why it's proper is because it's a mudaf. Mulku is a mudaf because it's light and it's got no al on it. So mulku is a mudaf. And then as samawati is the mudaf ilay, the first one. And al ardi is the second mudaf ilay. And you can see that the two mudaf ilays have been joined with a kharf of ataf that connect the two, the wa. And remember the rule that when the mudaf ilay is proper so in this case the mudaf ilay is proper because of the al on the as samawati and the al on the al ardi and automatically if the mudaf ilay is proper then the mudaf becomes proper as well so therefore the the uh, mudaf is actually proper so this whole mubtada muakkar is actually proper and know that this is not a special mudaf of time and place so it's not a zarf otherwise it would be called a muta'allik bil habar so this is just a standard mudaf uh, idafa fragment so therefore it's the mubtada but whereas if it was a special mudaf of time and place a zarf then it would be called a muta'allik bil habar not a mubtada so here we have fee, another example fi klubihim maradun so in the heart is a disease. So we didn't use the word, ex we didn't use only, we didn't use the exclusivity word. And there's a reason why, it's because in fi kulubihim, this is the muta'alik bil habar muqaddam. So there is a muta'alik bil habar and it's being brought forward, so it's muqaddam. And you can see it's a harf of jar fragment. The fi is a harf of jar. And the kulubi is uh, the majroor. And then the kulubi him itself is an idafa fragment. So the kulubi is light and it has no al on it. And the mudafile is him, which is the attached pronoun um, him, which is the original uh, independent pronoun is hum, which means they. So this is actually a harf of jar fragment, then a mudafile, uh, idafa fragment. So fi kulubi him. But because. Uh, there's a connection between fi and kulubi and kulubi and him. The whole thing is called the muta'alik bil habar. So we wouldn't separate it. We wouldn't say fi kulubi is the muta'alik bil habar. We, we include the whole thing because as long as there's a grammatical, grammatical connection, then all of it becomes part of the muta'alik bil habar, even if it's an idafa or if it's something else, because there's a continuation, there's a connection. So fi is connected to kulubi, kulubi is connected to him. So the whole thing becomes muta'alik bil habar. 
and the maradun is a mubtada mu'akhar but it is common it is not proper if it was proper then you would get the exclusivity so then it would be in the hearts only is a disease but because the mubtada is common there is no exclusivity if anything this is actually a normal sentence structure the muta'alik bil habar is muqaddam and the mubtada, mubtada, mubtada is muakhar when it's common and so therefore there is no exclusive, exclusivity and the meaning is in the heart is a disease and there's two more abnormal noun sentence structures or order and the first is a possession sentence which means uh, like he has for example and the second is confirming existence of something or someone so for example when we say there is something or there is someone and the way this uh, the structure is of this sentence is the muta'alik bil habar and then the mubtada comes first uh, muta'alik bil habar comes first and then is followed by the mubtada so there's two types of possession sentences so the first type so you have the muta'alik bil habar muqaddam and it's always the harf of jar lam is always used with the possessor of the item so meaning the lam the harf of jar is connected with the possessor of the item so the one who possesses who has possession then you add the harf of jar lam to it and then the mubtada is muakhir and it is the thing which is possessed so here's an example of what we mean so lahum azabum muhinun so this means for them is a humiliate, humiliating punishment so lahum is the muta'alik bil habar muqaddam and you can see the harf of jar lam is used with the possessor of the item which is them because they're the ones that possess it uh, and then azabun muhinun is the mubtada muakhar and it is the thing which is possessed azabun muhinun and it's a masuf sifa structure so azabun means punishment muhinun means humiliating so masuf sifa structure because the four properties uh, four ism properties match between azabun and muhinun um, so the second type of possession sentence you have muta'alik bil habar muqaddam and this muta'alik bil habar should be the special mudaf inda is used uh, of time and place so it's a zarf which means uh, with uh, and it's connected with the possessor of the item and the mubtada muakhar is the thing which is possessed so an example here would be in the hu il musa'ati so it says with him alone is the knowledge of the hour so in the hu is the muta'alik bil habar muqaddam and the special mudaf in the is used uh, which is connected with the possessor of the item which is him and that's the attached pronoun who uh, and then you have il musaati which is the mubtada muakhar and it is the thing which is possessed and in this case it's an idafa fragment because ilmu is light with no al and saati is you can see it's in uh, it's the uh, mudafilay it's in judge status but now as the mubtada is proper and the reason why the mubtada is proper is because when we have an idafa fragment, if the mudafilay is proper, which it is because it has an al on it, sa'ati, al sa'ati, it automatically the mudaf becomes proper as well. So this mubtada is actually proper. When the mudafilay is proper, the mudaf is proper. So exclusivity is added as the mubtada is muakhar. That's why we said with him alone is the knowledge of the hour. Because if you remember from before, when we have a muta'alik bil habar, which is muqaddam, and the mubtada, which is muakhar, as long as it's proper, then exclusivity, exclusivity is given. So that's why you, you add in the translation the word alone. So confirming existence of something or someone. And again, this is there's two types of confirming existence. Uh, the first type is when you have a muta'alik bil, uh, bil habar muqaddam then a mubtada muakhar so here for example is the same example we used before fi uh, maradun so in the hearts is a disease so fi kulubihim so muta'alik bil habar muqaddam so the harf of jar is a harf of jar fragment 
But uh, remember, as, as I said before, the fi kulubi is the harf of jar fragment, and the kulubi him is an idafa. But because there's a continuation in the connection of the isms, then all of it's grouped together, and all of it's called the mutalik bil habar. And the maradun is the mubtada muakhar. But it is common, not proper. So this is a normal centered structure. Therefore, there's no exclusivity added to it. And if we just move on to the complex sentences, so the Hubbard can contain a whole sentence which has its own grammatical makeup. So it has a lower level makeup. So a full sentence contained, uh, so a full sentence can be contained by the Hubbard. So the Hubbard can contain a noun sentence, which we said before that a sentence begins with an ism or a noun. And the Hubbard can actually contain a verb sentence in itself. So the sentence begins with a fi'l or a verb, which we'll be discussed later. Example with us. Uh, so, inna hum hu, hum al musiduna. So this means certainly they, they are the corruptors. So you can see that the word they is used twice because hum, which means they, is actually twice in the sentence. So inna hum hum al musiduna. So certainly they, they are the corruptors. So inna hum is the mubtada because it's the harf of nasab and it's ism. Inna is the harf of nasab and hum is its ism. And then hum al mufsiduna is the habar. But the habar itself has a noun sentence within it. So the hum in hum al mufsiduna is the mubtada, which is an independent pronoun. And al mufsiduna is its habar. So as per usual, at the end of every chapter, we always advise uh, to uh, take a look at the vocabulary of this chapter at the end of this book, ideally at the end of every session, this curriculum is study, so that your Arabic grammar knowledge increases with your uh, vocab knowledge, inshallah.